de Roland Garros 7. Merci. Ah, oh, late September and early October in France. Summer dwindling and wilting into a trustingly chilly autumn. But what's the clay bridge that slides you between seasons? I'm Alexandra Lawton, and we're here at Roland Garros. The Roland Garros set. I'm Annette Contivate, and you're listening to the Roland Garros set. Roland Garros, day three, rainy but humid. Uh, so have a familiar sense of Garros played in May, almost. It feels like home. As the clay gets clunkier, so does elimination of players fighting and losing in matches that, thanks to the lights in the roof, have gone on for hours. The six-hour marathon that eventually saw Justino beat Mute was a raw eye-watering repast and it was ridiculous. Medvedev was downed by Fuchovic and uh, Morfis lost to a resilient and curiously dressed Bublik. Ah, nights with lights, Garros. Uh, anyway, Jocko on today, fighting again to sort of tip the odds and take the title. Hard to forget Jocko. He's on Lacoste billboards everywhere, looking swarthy and fashionable. And that really brings me to uh, my subject today, fashion and tennis. Who are we wearing and why? But first I'm off to interview an artist who's uh, painting a massive fresco uh, for Lacoste uh, with all the sponsored players on the outside of Court 8. So time to get in, step and repeat. Greg Podovin, which is literally a a little pot of wine in uh, in English. Uh, You're the artist who's uh, putting graffiti... A graffiti picture outside yeah. Court 8. Hello. Hello. I make uh, this fresco for Lacoste and uh, Roland Garros tournament. Who, who are we seeing here? We're seeing... It's all, all, all the players of the Lacoste team. Right. Yes, uh, the champions and uh, the legends, the future legends. It's a, it's a match point between Novak Djokovic and René Lacoste. René Lacoste and all between. It's like a timeline. It, it is, uh, yes, it's a timeline. Uh, and it's a tennis ball with a le- like a sort of a kapow kind of uh, sketch with Lacoste. 45 players painted on this fresco. And uh, do you do any other t- uh, tournaments or is it just uh, Garros? It's my first uh, tournament in tennis, but I'm an uh, illustrator uh, specialized in sports. I draw for football, cycling, and uh, it's the first time in tennis. And is there a particular tennis style? Yes, they install because Lacoste is a brand. You're trying to draw the, 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 draw the elegance of Lacoste. Elegance, la performance. Voilà. And the performance of Lacoste. Well, it's uh, brightly coloured. It's almost uh, pop artish, would you say? Yes, yes. It's, uh, it's, it's my, my inspiration is in pop art. That's fantastic. And if you could uh, describe Roland Garros as a style, what would you say? Glamour, but I think uh, Lacoste and Roland Garros are... They they share the same uh, message as like elegance, performance, and uh, sports. Greg, I, it's I, I, I sorry, I don't speak very well English. You're doing very well, honestly, and uh, and I really look forward to seeing the finished uh, the finished article. Thank you so much. Now I don't believe it. I'm a bit starstruck. Um, I'm standing in front of Annette Contevite. Hi, hi. Well, you're looking at this picture that's going to be done for Lacoste. Uh, on court eight. Are you in this picture? I see myself here. Yeah, it's, it's it looks super cool already, although I, I realise it's not done yet. <laughs> what the other work of art is as well, I suppose people talk about your tennis and being such a, uh, a young player. I mean, on day one, you got knocked out. I did, yeah. It was a very tough match yesterday and uh, my opponent, Caroline, did play play a really great match. So it was a, it was a shame, but, um, you know, it was a really nice match on to, I mean, to play on uh, Philippe Chatre and yeah, it's always nice to play on a centre court of a slam. I mean, but we're not, it's not the last we're seeing of you, that's for sure. So you, for an Estonian, you have a very, very good English accent. Uh, my coach is British, but um, I definitely picked the accent up way before he started coaching me. I, I had quite a lot of British uh, friends when I was uh, growing up and playing tournaments. It's, um, it's Kim Sears' uh, father, isn't it? Uh, Andy Murray's uh, father-in-law, I suppose. Does that make you and Andy close? Nigel says, yeah, <laughs> we've talked a few times, but, you know, it's his family and everything. But, um, 
you know, he's obviously on tour with his team and I'm, I'm on tour with Nigel. So, you know, we're both doing our thing. <laughs> Absolutely. And uh, you are wearing Lacoste. Obviously, is this your, it's, it's a big sponsor, oh, it's a sponsor of Radon Garros, obviously. What do you think of the clothes here? I, I love the dress I was, if anyone happened to see my match yesterday, the dress I was wearing last night. And um, yeah, I mean, I love the brand in general. I wear, I wear their lifestyle clothes as well and on-court stuff. And I, I think it's, it's such a great and stylish brand. I don't want to say this, but it, I feel like I have to. It's like, you went down in style yesterday. <laughs> you can say that. <laughs> okay, so what's next for you then? Um, well, hopefully there's a tournament in um, Czech Republic, in Ostrava. Um, I'll definitely plan to play that. Well, um, Anna, thank you so, so much. And uh, it was a pleasure watching you on day one. Did you know? Hello, sir. Ronald Garris, day three. You enjoying it? I am enjoying it. Why are you enjoying it? Because it's great. That's a pretty concise answer. Thank you very much. Just, uh, I noticed you from afar. Who are you wearing? Uh, I'm dressed for the conditions, let's say. Conditions, obviously, very important in tennis. It's a movable feast. But who, what did you choose to wear? Anything fashionable? Uh, something waterproof was the main thing when I was looking into my wardrobe this morning. And Garros, what do you think the look is here from your experiences here? The look this year is definitely stay warm, stay dry. Uh, I don't think, compared to previous years, that fashion is utmost on people's mind when they go to their wardrobes in the morning. So it's more about uh, function than fashion, you'd say? Definitely about functionality this year, but that's not to say there aren't stylish people around. But I wanted to put some knowledge on you. Are you ready? I am ready, yeah. Did you know women's tennis clothes changed from tight corsets and full-length dresses in 1887 because Lottie Dodd, a 15-year-old player who went on to win Wimbledon that year, was allowed to play in less restrictive tennis garb. Womanly corsets were a massive no-no for younger generations, and she wore a kind of school uniform-like long skirt and uh, long sleeve shirts. And Susan Langdon ran with the idea and was the centre of a huge scandal in 1999 when she wore a, a calf-length skirt, short sleeves and a wrap around her head. Not only did she win that year, Wimbledon, she started the headband fashion in tennis and coined the Langdon Bando. And off the court, a look that defined the Roaring Twenties. Have you learned something today? I have. I'm going to teach you something too. I think it's pronounced Bondo, and I'm a, a keen lover of the headband myself. So my, uh, my French speaking is not that fashionable. Uh, for a French person, it's pretty poor. The Roland Garros set. So I have the great fortune of being on the plateau, sort of the live area where you've got your Guy Forges and your uh, Roland Garros television with none other than... Daniela Hantuchova. A former Slovakian tennis player and a champ and one of the uh, people that led the charge, I suppose, in terms of fashion. Hello. Hi there. So if you've got some titles, just reel them off for us. Titles? Uh, what do you mean? Oh, oh, uh, well... Accolades, jewels, pearls of car- in your career? Uh, in my career, I would say, uh, you know, the mixed doubles with uh, now my colleague Fabrice Santoro here in France uh, obviously was special. And, you know, all, all the Grand Slam titles, um, you know, mean a lot to me. So, yeah, that's pretty much, especially from Paris, what I remember making finals here as well. Some great singles uh, results too. Plus you beat Martina Hingis once, didn't you? Oh, a couple of times. Ah, I got, had to get that one in for sure. So it's fashion in tennis. And you're one of the people, you're very elegantly dressed at the moment with a blazer that's uh, red and uh, cream crocheted with a red t-shirt, some jeans, some boutin, looking very garros at the moment. And I, um, I wonder, fashion and functionality in tennis on and off the court, really, because one led to the other. So tennis whites, for example, uh, it was more about lawn and gala events that, uh, or sort of outdoor events uh, and garden parties that led to tennis and uh, spectators and players alike would wear white. But what are the court clothing regulations and restrictions at Garros today? Uh, well, at Garros, I don't think there are too many. I have to say uh, Roland Garros has been always the most fashionable uh, Grand Slam of them all. That's uh, a- <gasps> What about Wimbledon? Um, as far as fashion, really, you know, here you can be more experimental because it's no white rules only. And uh, also, as a player and now working for TV, I have to say it's a slam where you pretty much bring your eight uh, wardrobe because, you know, it's Paris, it's the fashion capital of the world. And uh, Do you play? Do you bring your A game in fashion and what you're wearing more than tennis almost? 
Well, these days, of course, uh, when I was player, also, you know, as a player, you normally just put, you know, two pair of jeans uh, to have dinner or something like that in between matches, but not, not to Paris. The, to Paris, you always try to bring nice stuff. Um, so, and also when you look at the crowds, the way they are dressed when they come to watch, uh, it's been always the most chic one. And uh, that's- Me aside, obviously, wearing my amazing anorak. Come on, it's cold. So, we, yeah, there is not too many choices we have these days, but... Uh, you know, even, you know, having the year Roland Garros now in uh, late September is just uh, such a cool part of the year to be here as well. And Paris is one of the cities where no matter what the season is, you c- you, you know that uh, you're going to get the most, uh, like I said, the most fashionable Grand Slam of them all. Wow. Gosh, that is a, that's a fantastic words for Garros. But I feel like it's women that aren't leading the charge in terms of own brand clothing in tennis it's more i mean federer's got his own brand murray andy murray has just got his own his own brand why do you think that is well i wouldn't say that because you've got serena you've got uh, murray oh yes i was going to get to serena williams that bodysuit that she was wearing um it's it's, so you've got serena williams and and maria sharapova um you know back in the days chrissy ever obviously was uh, wearing uh, very classy stuff. Um, you know, then you've got oh, uh, Caroline Wozniak, you know, with uh, Stella McCartney joining tennis as well. So you've got um, so many incredible stories, both in women's and tennis uh, and men's, uh, as far as the, the fashion goes in tennis. So fashion and functionality. Um, I don't know, I'm, I'm, as an amateur tennis player, shorts, very easy to carry balls in shorts and play. Skirts? Less easy. Do you feel like it's easier for men in a in a fashion sense on the court? Well, not really, because most of the girls they don't really carry balls during the match. If if okay, forget Grand Slams, but let's just say in general, amateur or you know when you're playing at home. Um, uh, still, you know the the dresses and skirts are made um, so that the, it's really easy to keep the ball there. So I wouldn't say there is an advantage for for the men or. Or women's uh, at all, really. Okay, all right. Well, I've been told. There we are. And you were sponsored by, by and large? Um, well, for many, many years, Nike. And then um, the second half of my uh, career with Adidas. So explain that to us. You've, you have asked to wear certain items uh, before the day starts. Is, is that right? Well, we, you discuss with uh, designers uh, many months before uh, the lines come out, you know, what your thoughts are and if there are some changes you would like to make. And then obviously, you know, there are certain lines for certain players. Um, and that's how mainly, you know, the, the brands decide who's going to wear what. But we know that pretty much, you know, a couple months ahead of time. But what's the most irritating piece of clothing that you've had to wear on court? I have to say I've been really lucky. Um, and all the dresses... Um, or skirt or something you didn't feel comfortable in again um you know i've been lucky with the designers i got to work with and all of my outfits uh i've been really always very comfortable you know wearing them and if uh, like i said you know we do all the testings uh, before so if there was something i wouldn't necessarily feel comfortable with we would change that before coming to the tournaments but i have to say that hardly ever happened but it takes a lot of planning beforehand. So that's, that's important to know. And, and Lacoste is one of the sponsors of Garros. What would you say it is about Lacoste that is aesthetically in keeping with Roland Garros? Oh, I have to say, I've been such a huge fan, even though I've you know, never been involved with a brand because they just bring that class, that French style uh, being really chic, as I said, um, to, the, to the tournament. And that's why, thanks to them, it's been... Uh, uh, you know, one of, uh, like I said, a very fashionable one. And, uh, you know, when you think of Lacoste r- right away, you think of Paris and tennis. Fair enough. Oh, and, you know, it's it's timeless, as Rolex would say. Also a sponsor. Um, Nadal had to do an underwear campaign, which led to his unforgettable cameo in a uh, Shakira video, which his camp said that he felt a bit self-conscious about. Um, you must have been a dream for a lot of brands in, in your career because, you know, you're uh, very uh, well put together, very good looking and you're, um, you know, easy on the eye, let's say. Um, were you ever asked to do something uh, memorable, I suppose, but quite particular, something like the underwear campaign or the Shakira video? Well, I did one where there was no underwear, <laughs> uh, but it was done in a very classy way, and it was for the ESPN cover. Um, so that, that was uh, oof, many years ago. It was the body issue, and 
And actually, I was really proud of it because I was the first tennis player to be on the cover. And it just showed that, you know, athletes should really be proud of, you know, their bodies because it is like um, a computer for office people. Body is what we play tennis with. And you should be really uh, proud of it and really embrace it. Um, The other one that I got asked and first I was a little bit uncomfortable with it because I was still young was obviously the Sports Illustrated shoot uh, which uh, obviously you can't turn down because it's such a privilege so I would say those two shoots were kind of brave but at the same time very satisfying because um, you know I got a lot of nice response for that and it was just uh, also putting me outside of my comfort zone and I'm, I'm, I'm just so glad I did it. It's important. So culture, tennis, fashion, functionality, it really goes hand in hand in in the world of tennis today. Oh, definitely. But I think at the end of the day, it's so important and the most fashionable piece you can own, whether you're a tennis player or just a normal person, is what comes from within you and the energy you bring, uh, whatever you do, wherever you go. And that's more important than um, any clothes that you have on. I don't think we need to say anything more. Thank you so much for that, Daniela, and good luck for the rest of the tournament. Thanks so much. It was a pleasure. That's it from me on day three, donning a fabulously fashionable drowned rat look with hair that looks like it's nestling ferrets and other creatures. Uh, But join me for tomorrow, day four, on the Roland Garros set. If you have any comments or stories that you'd like to share with us, please do get in contact at hashtag Roland Garros on Twitter, go to Facebook, or use our official Roland Garros mobile app, or just get in contact directly with me. That's at Alexandra Lawton. Toodaloo. The Roland Garros set.